Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you're joining me from today. Uh, I'm excited to talk to you guys because we're about a month away from the Minnesota fishing opener. And what better thing to do while we wait for muskie fishing than to talk about it. Um, I thought that I would share with you guys um, some of my favorite baits that I use across the range of seasons here in Minnesota. Um, from all the way from, you know, the fishing opener to midsummer to early fall, all the way up to ice up. Um, these are some baits that I have had some great success with over the years. Um, so I want to share a little bit about gear with you all today. Um, I wanted to share a little bit of some of the experiences that I've had that have really helped shape me as a muskie fisherman and just really helped to guide me along um, as I've really learned because that's really the challenge um, when it comes to a new muskie fisherman is information and shortening the learning curve. Um, a lack of information is really what can create barriers um, and can really make it a grind to try and put that first muskie in the boat. So um, hopefully whether you're a new muskie fisherman or somebody come in here with a little bit more experience today, um, you'll gain some things, you'll gain some tidbits of knowledge that will maybe help shorten that learning curve so that you can have a little bit more success in the water. The first bait that I wanna talk about here is the Magic Maker. Um, this Magic Maker that I have in particular is about 12 years old actually, and it did account for my very first muskie, a 41 inch fish um, caught during midsummer. Um, but one thing that I really do like about the Magic Maker is actually that it can also excel during the early season period as well. Um, a lot of times when those fish are recovering from the spawn and they're up shallow yet, um, they aren't necessarily you know, willing to chase or to, um, to hit a larger profile bait. And so that smaller bait can be the ticket sometimes. And you can also really control the speed. So that magic maker darts side to side as you impart action on it. And you really get to decide how fast you want to make that bait dart from side to side. In the midsummer months, I speed it up. I really get that thing shooting from side to side quickly. Um, but early season, you can really slow it down and kind of entice those um, slower fish to, to follow and to chase. And then even maybe speed it up as you get closer to the boat. Just kind of reading the mood of the fish, right? Um, so that's a fun bait. Um, actually, I'll go ahead and show you guys a picture of that 41 inch muskie. This is my first muskie. Um, it was the one that really kind of got me started in this whole game and really kind of fueled the addiction. So here's that first muskie, check it out. Um, and now the second bait that I wanted to kind of talk about today is the Pose Giant Jackpot. I really have a love-hate relationship with this bait. Um, I have actually never boated a muskie on this bait. And yet it's probably accounted for the most action that I've had of any of these baits on the table. I have had numerous times where I've had fish just flop over the top of it, um, explode on the bait, miss it entirely, um, you know, just be hooked poorly. And it can be a really tough bait to, to keep a fish pinned on, but it's still worth being on this table because it is an effective bait. I have had a lot of action on that bait. I have had many times where that bait has been the only thing that's gotten a fish to go during a day. So this is one that I like to use um, during the summer months. Um, really early summer all the way through early fall is when this bait shines for me. Some people will say that you can throw top water all the way to ice up. I do not necessarily do that but um, that can be a great one to add to the arsenal as well. Um, the next bait here, moving on down, this is a pacemaker, a Senate tackle pacemaker. And um, this bait's been a fun one for me. Um, I can think of two fish in particular that stand out to me. Um, and I'll go ahead and put those um, fish pictures up too as I'm talking about these fish, but the first fish that I that comes to mind for me was my very first Mississippi River muskie that I caught. Um, it was a 39 inch fish and um, I had just bought this lure. So this lure must be probably about 12 years old now as well as that magic maker. Um, and so it was a new bait and I had casted it out there and got it about halfway back to the boat 
And I was just kind of looking around. Now, I wasn't an experienced muskie fisherman. You know, now I really try and make sure that I'm following the bait and really staying honed in on the bait um, visually. Um, and I just remember back then I was just kind of, you know, daydreaming out on the lake uh, or on the river, actually, in this case. And all of a sudden I just got smoked. Just an explosion of water as this 39 inch muskie um, inhaled this pacemaker. And I went to set the hook and I actually snapped my reel handle off. And so I ended up having to just kind of like manually like turn the reel handle um, without the, the actual handle being there. I, I don't know, it was really messed up, it was weird. Um, and eventually I got it in, but it was just a really bizarre scenario. Um, and then another fish, um, actually this is a bait that I still use even 12 years after purchasing it. Um, last year, I got a 47 and a half inch muskie on it on a new lake that I had never fished before, tried it for the first time and it really paid off. So it's a bait that's still producing for me and one that I continue to use to this day. Um, the next bait here is a musky mayhem double cowgirl. Uh, many of you will probably be familiar with that bait. Um, probably one of the most popular musky lures, probably one of the most popular bucktails that you can really find on the market today, and yet it still continues to produce. Uh, it was really back in the mid, early to mid 2000s, I think when this bait came out, and it was one of the hottest lures um, at the time and just put a lot of 50 plus inch fish in the boat. Um, I have certainly caught fish on this one as well. Um, Nothing really comes to mind as far as just, you know, like any giants that I've caught on, on the buck or on the double cowgirl, but um, I will put a picture up of a 43 incher here that I did catch on the bucktail. Um, and this is really one of those baits that shines for me during the midsummer months, um, during the warm water period. Um, I try not to fish when water temperatures exceed 80 degrees. Um, but when water temperatures are in the mid 70s to upper 70s, I will throw that double cowgirl, so, say July into August, and I've really had some pretty good success with it. This next one is the Rapala Super Shad. Um, that one's been, I, I, I've had some really cool fish that um, have been accounted for by that lure in the boat. Um, one that really comes to mind for me actually was a fish in late June. Um, fishing a deep weed edge. I was taking a new muskie fisherman out for the very first time. He had never been fishing for muskies before, was maybe an hour into this trip, and he got smoked by a 46 and a half inch muskie, and we got that one in. Um, other times of the year when I've done really well with this um, would be during the midsummer months when we have, say, like a cold front, nothing else seems to be working. A lot of times those fish tend to kind of settle down in the weeds. And this bait um, really seems to kind of just tick the tops of the weeds and be able to kind of rip through them. And so being able to get down to them when they're tucked into those weeds really seems to help um, trigger bites during some pretty tough periods. Um, the next bait on the list here is the Chaos Tackle Medusa. Um, that one's kind of newer to me. I just started fishing with this bait actually last year. Um, for the longest time, I think I was just kind of resistant to throwing another rubber bait. I had bulldogs. I thought, well, why would it really work any different than a bulldog? Um, but no, this bait has really produced well for me. Um, I've caught a couple muskies on it, even though I've really only thrown it a limited amount of times. Um, and yet it has, um, put some fish in the boat for me. And so I'll go ahead and put a picture of, um, I think it was a 39 incher that I caught in this bait last year. Um, as we were talking about other rubber baits, the bulldog here, um, the bulldog has been a good bait for me. Um, I find that I've really had good luck with this bait when throwing it over mid lake, um, weed and grass humps. So during the summertime, once the weeds have really kind of established themselves, throwing this bait and letting it kind of sink down, um, and just getting it over the tops of those um, weed humps out in the middle of lakes and mid-lake structure has really accounted for some nice fish. Um, I had a 45 and a half inch fish that I caught a few years back on this bait here. Um, and I'll go ahead and post that picture up here as well. Um, this bait, uh, this is a Joe Booker Top Raider. 
probably the bait that's accounted for more muskies than any other bait in my box. I have just really loved throwing this bait. A lot of fun memories here. There's really probably too many pictures for me to share on this video that have came from this very top raider here. This one's pretty beat up. Um, my guess is that it's probably caught in, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 muskies on it between myself and um, boat partners that I fish with. So that's been a great bait and it's still going strong. This next bait here is the Suic. And this has really been a great bait during all seasons. Um, it's really kind of excelled during the colder water periods, um, say late spring to early fall for me, um, when the fish are maybe needing a little bit slower of a presentation. Um, it's also excelled during cold front days in the summer when those fish kind of settle down into the weeds like we talked about before. Um, so that's just really been a great bait. One fish in particular that comes to mind was a 46 inch muskie that my brother caught on the suet. I'll go ahead and post that picture, but that was one that he caught that was his biggest at the time actually. Um, and that was a midsummer fish and I believe bluebird skies cold front. Um, and so yeah, that was a heck of a fish for him to catch. Here is the last bait here, the Lake X lures fat bastard. Um, and I've actually only been fishing with this lure for a couple of years now. Um, but coincidentally, it did account for my personal best muskie, a 49 and three quarter inch fish. Um, we'll go ahead and post that up here right now. Um, and so, yeah, it did catch me my PB muskie. And um, what can I say about that fish? That was just a heck of a fish. Um, it was actually the last cast of the day, end of August. Um, my buddy Clint was pulling up the trolling motor for the day. And I just happened to say something along the lines of, all right, like I'll just take one more cast. And I threw that bait out there and I just heard an explosion of water out on the lake. And I knew I had a big one and I didn't know that it was gonna be a quarter inch shy of 50 inches. And so the search for that 50 continues. Hey, maybe that is an idea for a video series. Why don't you guys comment below and let me know if you want me to document my quest for a 50 inch muskie. I, I'd be just really curious to see what you all want um, and what you all think about that. If you want me to try and document my search for my first 50 inch muskie, I will definitely take that into consideration as I'm planning just kind of summer videos and things that I'm gonna do over the summer. Okay, for the next part of the video, I wanted to talk a little bit about my muskie rod and reel combo that I use. Um, actually, I have two here. And so the first one here, is a Shimano Calcutta 400B paired up with a seven foot six fast action, extra heavy um, Shimano comp right here. So this rod here has really um, put a lot of fish in the boat for me and it's kind of older. I've had this rod for probably about 10 years now with the reel paired up with it and it's really served me well um, and it still works really well. Um, but I kind of use this as my jerkbait rod. And so for the reason, the reason for that is that it's a little bit shorter of a rod as well. And it's a little bit stiffer. And so it seems to really work, um, trying to impart action on those jerk baits, maybe those baits that you need to get moving side to side. Um, and just kind of those, those, those baits where you're not necessarily retrieving them in a straight line. Um, I do have this paired up with the power handle. Um, the reel has a five to one gear ratio, which is pretty slow by today's standards. And so that's also part of the reason why I use this as a jerk bait rod is I'm not necessarily using it to burn baits in. A lot of, um, you know, the baits on the table here that I might use this rod and reel combo for would be, you know, like the Suic, um, the Super Shad Wrap, the Magic Maker here, um, the Jackpot, a lot of those baits where you're imparting action in them. So this has been a great rod and I'm gonna to continue to use it. Um, hopefully I can get another few years out of it yet. My other combo here that I wanted to talk about is um, a newer rod and reel to me here. This is a Shimano 400 tranks. It's got the 7.6 to one gear ratio and it is paired up with a Chaos Tackle Assault Stick SWAT. This is a nine foot rod 
um, extra heavy power, fast action. Um, this is what I call my power fishing rod right here. Uh, this rod and reel setup is really equipped to handle bigger baits like, um, you know, big bulldogs, um, even larger than this one. It can handle a pounder, no problem. Um, bigger top water baits like the pacemaker here. Um, double cowgirls and the double eights, double ten sizes. Um, really just about anything that I can throw at this rod, it's going to be able to handle. Um, also with that nine foot rod, um, it can really help with my figure eights as well. Um, when you have a fish coming in at boat side, you want to make sure that you're not limited in your maneuvers. And so that nine foot rod really helps you extend your forearm out and away from the boat so that you have a nice wide turn on your figure eights. That's really important, right? You don't want to have a narrowed turn because then you kind of cut the fish off and it can't follow your bait around the eight. So um, this rod really helps with that as well. Um, if I had one rod in real combo that I could recommend to somebody, it would be this one. This Shimano Trinks paired up with the Chaos Assault Stick. Um, so that is my go-to there. So those two rods are my go-to rod and reel combos. Um, with the longer rod, I generally use um, a fluorocarbon leader. Um, for that rod, I'm like I said, I'm usually reeling in bucktails, heavier baits, oftentimes lures that I'm reeling in with a straight retrieve, and I don't have to impart action on those baits. So I'll use a heavy fluorocarbon. Um, typically, I'm using 100 to 130 pound test fluorocarbon on that. Um, for a jerkbait rod, I'm oftentimes using a 12 inch steel leader. And the reason for the steel leader is that it actually helps you to impart action on your bait. So if you're trying to make your lure kind of dance side to side, that steel leader actually helps a lot with that. Whereas the fluorocarbon leader kind of has some bend and some give in it as you're trying to, you know, jerk and pull your baits along. And that actually prevents you from getting the fullest extent of the action of those baits. So that is kind of the rationale behind using a steel leader versus fluorocarbon, at least for me. So you guys may remember at the beginning of this video, I talked about how um, information is one of the bigger barriers to the average musky fisherman finding success in musky fishing. And so I don't claim to be an expert musky fisherman. I mean, I'm rocking a 1968 14 foot Crestliner aluminum boat with a pull string motor, you know, <laughs> I'm not uh, exactly your Joe Booker or your Pete Mayna, but I have been able to learn quite a bit and I have had a fair share of success, um, even operating out of, you know, a pretty small boat that's really not designed for musky fishing. Um, but I've been able to do that because I've been able to find ways to take in information. Um, when it comes to musky fishing, um, the information and the sample size of that information that we get is oftentimes very small because success is oftentimes having an opportunity just to catch a musky in a day or catching a musky in a day. Um, we're talking one fish. That's what defines success. So to find patterns and to replicate information becomes really difficult when you know success means that you maybe catch one fish in a day um, if you're lucky um, one thing that i've really done to help me shorten my learning curve and gain access to information is by picking up a sportsman's connection minnesota musky fishing maps book um, and so i'm not sure but i think you might be able to get this book um, in other states as well so a sportsman's connection book um, these books have really proved valuable for me. So the book provides detailed maps of each of the lakes that you'll be fishing, um, all designated musky lakes in Minnesota, um, with the exception of some newer, newer bodies of water that have recently been stocked are in this book here. Um, and so there are d detailed maps and um, each section of the book, each lake, has guides that contribute to the book and they talk about some of their own hot spots, areas of the lake that they've had success, even specific lures that they've done well with in these lakes. Um, there's stocking information, um, fish survey data reports are in these books, um, just a really invaluable tool. Um, even the, the specific areas of 
the lake um, that have been productive for guides are highlighted in the maps of the lake. So um, there's just a lot of great information in these books. Um, you really want to get your hands on one of these books um, if you're going to start musky fishing. And so that was really how I began musky fishing. And, you know, I also did have the uh, support of some mentors and just kind of friends that were also into musky fishing. So I was able to ask questions and just kind of, you know, talk with them about what, you know, how they were finding success musky fishing and what they were learning and what kind of tactics they were using. Um, so really also surrounding yourself with other anglers who are also having success, I think is really important when it comes to musky fishing too. Okay, so far we have talked about many of the baits that I use and have had success with over the years and just maybe why I choose some of the baits, seasonal patterns, you know, different actions of each of these baits and just kind of why they're effective um, for me. And then we've also talked about um, the combos that I use, the musky combos, the rod and reels that I use and just kind of why it is that I have two different um, rod and reel combos for different applications. Um, of course, I realize that that's not feasible for everybody. Um, you're talking to a guy here that fishes out of a 14 foot 1968 crest liner with a pull string motor. And so um, I certainly understand that finances can be a barrier in all this. It can get really expensive and just compiling gear, baits, rods, reels, um, all of that stuff really does add up quickly. So um, you really do have to just kind of, you know, pick and choose your punches and, you know, kind of store your gear up and build it up over the course of many years, which is what I've done. Um, and then the last thing that we've spent some time talking about is just access to information and just kind of how you can tip the odds in your favor and, you know, really take advantage of some of the resources that are out there. That Sportsman's Connection book is one example of one way that you can really gain access to information that can help shorten that learning curve for you. Um, sharing some of these baits with you guys, particularly this Lake X Lures Fat Bastard that accounted for my personal best 49 and three or quarter inch muskie, um, really got me thinking. It really got me thinking that this quest or search for this 50 inch muskie, that it needs to happen. And I think that that's, that's what's going to happen Th this summer. I'm bringing you guys with me. We're going to go on a search together for my first 50 inch muskie. I've been fishing for muskies since 2008, 2009, somewhere in that range. And I've caught some really nice fish, but it is time to put a 50 inch muskie in the boat. So I welcome you guys to join me in that search for that 50 incher. Um, I'm going to be working hard for that fish all summer long, and I'm going to bring you guys with. Hopefully it doesn't take me all summer long. Hopefully I can do this. Hopefully I can put this fish in the boat. I've been at it for a long time now, um, but I finally feel like I've put enough pieces of this musky puzzle together where I can have a realistic shot at this. So why don't you guys come join me um, and let's start this adventure right now. Let's go ahead and look for that 50 inch musky.